Our guest tonight here at the top of the show is Alice Hoagland. Alice Hoagland's son, Mark Bingham, died in the crash of the hijacked United Flight Number 93 in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, on September 11, 2001. Since her son was killed, Alice Hoagland has taken it upon herself to talk face to face with people who believe in the 9 11 conspiracies. She met several of them in Shanksville for a BBC documentary. It began to be surreal right away. I, I answered the phone and I heard Mark's voice and he said, Mom, this is Mark Bingham. Has he he was ever used, introduced himself like that? He introduced, well, on occasion. And people have made quite a to do about that. Uh, one of the, the persistent rumors is that what I heard was a computer generated voice that no son would call up his mother and say, Mom, this is Mark Bingham. And I was puzzling about it. Uh, but I realized that he was a public relations man. He was used to talking to people by, by introducing himself on the phone, like, this is, hello, this is Mark Bingham. It was what came out of his mouth when he was trying hard to be calm and composed and talk to his mom. I don't think there's anything suspicious about him saying his no. full name. Did it, is there any doubt in your mind that it was your boy that you were speaking to? Not, not a bit. Joining us now is Alice Hoagland. Mrs. Hoagland, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. I'm really looking forward to the chance to talk to you. Well, thank you, Rachel. You have really put all of the arguments into a very fine focus with that remarkable introduction. Oh, thank you. Um, you, you have been through this personally, and you didn't have to. You, you chose to, to put yourself out there face to face with people who deny the reality of the events that claimed your son's life. Why did you decide to do that? And, and did that process change anything for you? Well, you might be giving me a little too much credit. I actually stumbled into that program about conspiracy theorists. I remember getting a call from a lovely producer lady with a British accent telling me that it was a, a BBC documentary. So I rushed to get on a plane and flew out to Pittsburgh and ended up in Shanksville talking to, I didn't realize it at the time, but six or seven lovely young people who apparently, when I'm not around, spout all kinds of conspiracy theories. When I was there, they were extremely sweet to me. I hugged them and I thanked them and I, and I appreciated them uh, for, for remembering the story of Mark Bingham and all of his uh, fellow passengers on board Flight 93, and uh, I, I stumbled into conspiracy theories in another way. I was walking around the, sta the San Jose State campus one day, and I saw a sign, the 9-11 for truth. I didn't know what that meant, that it was a real buzzword for loonies. So I, I went and I listened to a, a fine fellow, an architect, expound for an hour about how it was impossible that the World Trade Center could have been brought down by nothing more than merely two Boeing 767s, and he asked, could anybody believe anything else? And my hand shot up, and he pinned me down, and I, I pointed out that, it, that uh, you really do need to consider a, a theory before you take it to your bosom. And folks, you're being sold a bill of goods here. And of course, I was in the minority, and I was not very popular, and I almost got shoved down. And wow. a lady said, well, your theory is no better than mine. So they reduced everything to theory. And I've come to the conclusion that you really can't talk to those folks. You cannot reason with them, because they are so invested in the crazy story that they've gotten a hold of, like a Rottweiler, and, and bitten it and chewed it until it became a really bloody big lie. You, the better the better way is to just use the serenity prayer and say, oh, Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot change and the and the courage to think to change the things I can and and the wisdom to know the difference. I've given up on trying to change conspiracy theorists. They're going to be with us for a long time. And a, a friend of mine told me uh, when they had remember that Goody. A uh, group called the Phelpses that mm -hmm. went around saying God hates fags. Well, they showed up one 9-11 anniversary in Shanksville, and a friend of mine put her arm around me and said, just think of them as mental patients. So that's what I do with conspiracy theorists. They're off their rockers. Everybody who I have talked to who has been personally affected by a story about which, is there, there, about which there is denialist conspiracy theories, which uh -huh. there are people who are making hay and saying this didn't really happen, everybody consistently has said, you cannot argue with them, that is what they want, and the facts will not convince them. Do you That's think right. there is anything, other than the serenity prayer, that can lessen the harm 
that they do. I'm worried because with these theories about Boston, I see the pretty mainstream conservative media really flirting with these folks and maybe maybe starting to mainstream some of this craziness so we maybe won't be able to ignore it. Well, I, I'm very sorry to hear that. And I, I know that conspiracy, conspiracy theories work against us in several ways. We've already talked about a few of them. Uh, another serious problem with conspiracy theories is that these two uh, Chechnyan brothers, especially the older one, Tamerlan Sarnayev, he, he radicalized himself and then he recruited his brothers and sisters to a ridiculously foul and, and violent form of Islam. And he did that by visiting these various uh, alternative news websites. One of them was Al-Qaeda that taught him step by step how to make a bomb. It, it's horrifying to me that uh, that we we live in the information age where we're blessed with a, just a bombardment of information, but it leaves us with the responsibility to sort out the wheat from the chaff, the truth from the lies, and operate on on the truth. And the trouble is that we can't. It's it's unfortunate that some very impressionable individuals, such as Sarnayev, was able to be recruited in that way. It was really cute. Brian Williams, uh, NBC Nightly News, he said that uh, that uh, these these men are being called uh, self radicalized Islamist terrorists, which is another whitewash way of saying cold-blooded killers. Yeah. I think it's important that we go back to really discuss, discussing things for what they are. And I cannot figure out, Rachel, where I fall in this continuum between right wing and left wing. I can see both sides, and in many ways I'm a little bit of both, so I'm going to call myself middle of the road. But I am patriotic. I love this country, the United States of America. I'm a former history teacher and the mom of a guy who went down fighting for the United States of America. And I I truly admire much of what the conservative side of America has to say. But on the other hand, I live in Central California. My son was a gay man. I am a, uh, 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 an odd and unlikely apologist. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, I, have, I have several different hats to wear. And I think that conspiracy theorists are making it more miserable for us in in this, uh, as we pick and choose our ways of life. I hear you. Alice Hoagland, the mother of Mark Bingham, who died on United Flight 93 in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, on 9-11. Uh, Alice, thank you so much uh, for You're being welcome, with us. Rachel. And it's been a lot of years, but um, I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, thank you, dear. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right.